It's the Hero Show. Welcome to the Hero Show, everybody. Starring the irrepressible Andrew Bernstein and the relentless Robert Begley. I, I am Andrew Bernstein, and you are indubitably Robert Begley. How you doing today, Robert? I am doing great, Andy. Talk about relentless. That's our hero today who will cover the man who put the fighting on the, on the big screen in a way nobody else did before him, uh, Bruce Lee. Yeah, relentless is is the adjective that comes to mind when I haven't seen mm -hmm. I haven't seen like you know Way of the Dragon or Enter the Dragon in so many years, but that's what I always remember about his his fighting style and and the yeah um, and the and the how fluid and graceful he was. He it's like yes, it's like he combined martial arts with ballet with with something you know about since you 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 uh, do, you, you, uh, you do uh, both right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, uh, and. Um, there was nobody like him. It's there's, simp there's simply one Bruce Lee in history, and we'll go into details of what is so unique about him. But you're right. I mean, that was part of it. Uh, he was a dancer when he when he was very young, childhood actor uh, as well. But we could start as we always do with his dates, Andy. Yeah. So that so is... so sh his life was so short. 1940 to 1973. He wasn't even mm -hmm. 33 when, when he passed away. When they think he had a, a some kind of a reaction to a painkiller that, that he was that he was taken for. Yeah, there were several injuries. several things that uh, yeah, S several different answers. Uh, heat stroke, I think, is the latest uh, contributing factor. So uh, and it that's was just his birthday, a couple of couple that's days. That's something ago, you'll so never have to worry about. That's something you'll never have to worry about, Rob, but you'll never suffer from heat <laughs> no. stroke. No, I, I won't. I won't. But, I'm making a reference. Robert likes Robert likes hot weather. Everybody, so he's I like he that flourishes. Weather, yes. that yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, I, I didn't realize I, that heat stroke was part was part of this. I didn't. I didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah. And again, a lot of con even controversy. Uh, and that's one of the things about him. His whole life was so mysterious in so many ways. So he was born in San Francisco. Right, literally right. In, in America, but he's three months old and uh, the family moves to Hong Kong, which as much as we like Hong Kong in the 1940s, the British rule, there was, there was a big distinction between the Brits and the local Chinese, uh, of which Lee was one, one of, and his father was an opera, famous opera singer. So he grew up in, a, in an artistic household and a child star, uh, I think when he was nine was his first movie. And for many years, he was that little bratty kid in films. And, but during this, one of the, one of the things in Hong Kong at the time, there were a lot of street gangs and to protect yourself, Lee got into fights constantly. He was hyperactive as, as a child and throughout his whole life, he was incredibly active and not very studious as far as like uh, schooling went, but mm. um, after some time, you know, teen teenage years, because he's getting into a lot of fights, the family realizes that this might not be the place for him. You know, he yeah, and, and, and uh, you know what? Uh, I I, I right. didn't realize these get these uh, street gangs used to rumble on the rooftops. I don't know if they use the term <laughs> yes. rumble. That's a that's an American term, but still, still that's what yeah. it is. Gang fights, the gang fights on the rooftops to avoid the cops, and and that's right. Bruce Lee beat up the son of a gangster, you know, a prominent gangster. Try the triads as they're known in Hong Kong. Yes, a triad leader yeah. so badly that the family feared that the gangster, you know, would would take take revenge on on the young uh, Bruce on the young the young Bruce and they sent him back to America didn't they yeah they sent him uh back to America to San Francisco by the way uh, Tim White of the objective standard has has a very good article that we right. have linked here and you can find uh, some specifics about that where actually Tim describes that he yeah he gets he's constantly in trouble and a couple of things about Bruce Lee. Tradition, he didn't care about. Here's where his innovative uh, mindset comes in, in handy because he was against authority with the British rulers and the British um, uh, police. So he would often get into trouble, get into gang fights, 
And then when he started training, um, whichever format there was, uh, Kung Fu, we could say, his teachers did not want him, for his ancestry, he actually has partial uh, German blood in him. So that was the right. first black mark because they only wanted pure, you know, pure Chinese. And then- And he was an American citizen. He was born in San Francisco. And he's an American he citizen. So he's got citizen. a couple of things. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 So he's got a couple of things going, going against him as far as traditional Chinese teachers go, because they are- Can't, get away, can't get away from racism, can you? Everywhere you go, you find racism and no. all these different forms. Yeah. It's, it's and a, this is part of his heroism, Andy, yeah. because he faced yeah, it right. day in right. and day out from both sides. Both sides. So now he comes to San Francisco. Where does he move to? Chinatown. <laughs> There's a relative that lives there, but only within a few months, he moves up to Seattle. And while he's in high school, so this is a 1959, 1960. So he's uh, in, you know, uh, you know, late teens, early twenties. And um, uh, just backtracking, actually. So in high school, he goes to Garfield High School in Seattle and he meets his future wife, uh, Linda. Linda Emery is is her name. And then um, he she, goes to- she, Is she Asian, Robert, or is she, no, uh, is she white, white no. American? Pure American. So part of the, again, the conflict is yeah. her family rejects him because he's Asian. His family rejects her because she's American. She's, she's white. She's, she's white. white. So she races both sides everywhere. Right? Yeah, yeah. He's facing it everywhere. They they are yeah. and they're like, we're individuals. Bruce Lee in interviews, and there's tons of interviews uh, with him on on YouTube. You can find so much material there. But he says, We're the human race. Okay. I don't I don't care Chinese, I don't care black, whatever. We are the human race. And that's an individualist exactly. uh, uh, you Absolutely. know approach that Absolutely right. uh, and so a major part of his achievement, Andy, is that he just rejects that. And so in Seattle, he starts uh, they meet because in high school he's actually doing a, a kung fu demonstration and they fall in love, they marry. Then he goes to University of Washington uh, in Seattle. You know what subject he majored in, right? Yeah, I know. I Philosophy, right? I know he studied philosophy as well as drama, uh, but I know he studied philosophy. philosophy. Yeah, yeah. He, ma he majored in philosophy. And again, part of, he was a first-hander. So he took parts of Eastern, he knew parts of Eastern philosophy. He knew, he studied parts of Western philosophy and he didn't, he just developed his own system. He wasn't going to be a follower of a specific philosophy. And so, yeah, but in, in 1964, <clears throat> uh, he, they get married against both sides of the family's wishes. He drops out of college and he opens up a school in uh, Seattle. He, uh, that's the first place that he opened up a, a Kung Fu school. And for students, part of, part of his training was so if we could backtrack a little bit, as far as martial arts and, and from the East, it was judo, pri primarily it was judo and uh, karate, and they were more um, for style, and, but less for actual like street fighting. Lee's part, his, his main point was, <clears throat> you need to be able to defend yourself. I mean, he, he ex experienced it in, in the real world that street, defending yourself by the best means possible is a way to, is pro-life, you know, as, as, as we would, uh, in, in the all-encompassing term, because you're able right, to right. Uh, protect yourself. So it's not this theoretical judo that... Right, yeah. right. Let me, let me, let me... Let me jump yeah. in here for a second and ask, and ask you something, because mm -hmm. I, I, I'm guessing you probably know more about the martial arts than I do. But my take, my understanding on this is that a lot, a lot of the martial arts is you, you know, before Bruce Lee's, you're performing certain moves, you're chore, you know, you, there's certain, there's certain blows yes. that you that that you that you could strike, and it's all very predictable. Uh, consequently, yes. it's it's not very effective. If you're in a street fight, you know, and having to fight for your life, and so Bruce Lee's, wait a minute, is Bruce Lee's attitude was, wait, this is the martial arts, this is for self defense, this is not about. It's not dancing, or it's not. There's not choreographed moves yeah. and you know and predictable blows that 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 you could strike. 
it's got to be more free flowing. You, know, you got to be like water, right? Yes. You have to, you, know, you have to be adaptable right. and, and, and take, yes. a, you know, and be able to strike blows from, with, from all different angles and, you know, and, and you know, and just very, very unpredictably. Mm-hmm. They said when he, when he was sparring with his, his partners and they did full contact sparring, right? They, the, his, his sparring partners had no idea how, how, where, when he was going to hit them. He just, he just makes stuff right. up on the fly. So yeah, that's that's got to be a much more effective, a much more effective yes. method of defending yourself in a street brawl if you're assaulted than you know the strictly choreographed uh, you know moves and, and blows of traditional martial arts. I would think you're totally right, Andy. And and there's a couple of things that he created um, the the contact. So exactly what you said is what he told uh, the teachers of other schools, and this caused an outrage because they, you know, they were not. Uh, again, they were so traditionalist, and part of that tradition is racist in the sense that it's this is a pure uh, method uh, discipline that's gone on for thousands of years, and you little upstart punk, you're you're not going to change these things, but <clears throat> he took ingredients from all these different formats and the contact element was he was the first one to have pads so you so if i you know if i'm going to kick you and you're holding a pad the damage is not going to be nearly you know and you're ready somewhat ready for it the damage is not going to be nearly as uh bad as if it's if you're not so that's the way to strengthen yourself and get used to getting hit you know i can say for myself i studied uh krav maga which is, is Israeli contact combat and has a lot of these elements and it is street fighting. It is life and death. Uh, and I could tell you when I, when I did it for the year that I took classes every day, I stopped ballet. I stopped yoga because I had a mindset where when I walked into the studio, Andy, I felt like this was life and death and I'm going to simulate it as much as I can. So I had like a real ferocious uh, attitude that I do, I don't want to have this, you know, I don't want to walk around with this attitude all the time, but it does make you feel safe in, in a place like New York city where, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of bad, bad neighborhoods and there could be crime anywhere. So, so, you know, you, because, know, you, remind, you know, you know, our, yeah. good, our good friend, uh, Rich Ruggiero, who studied Krav Maga, <laughs> he's, he's telling me once, he said, Andy, goes, he goes, in, in Krav Maga today, he said, I fought 20 guys. I said, really? Yeah. Rich, how, how'd you do? He said, I got my ass kicked. He said, you know, so yeah, this is, yeah. <laughs> this is simulating yeah. a real fight. Exactly. I just, at some point, maybe not now, but a little bit later in the broadcast, I want to bring up a movie that you may be familiar with because it's, it's circa like, 1990, early 90s, the movie Strictly Ballroom. Did you ever see Strictly Ballroom? Oh, I love that movie, the Australian film. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk yeah, about so that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Because the dialogue comes yeah. right out of the fountainhead. Some of it comes right out of the fountainhead, like yes. word for word, yes. you know, except substitute yes. ballroom dancing for architecture. <laughs> but it it fits Bruce Lee, what Bruce Lee is doing in the, in the martial arts. But, right? But okay. that is, You're right, Andy. And I'll, yeah. I'll give you an opening when, whenever yeah, you want you. to bring that up. But... Thank but you, he right. was a cha so dance was a part of him he was a cha-cha dancer when he came to the u.s muhammad ali the style of uh bopping around you know lee used that as well he, he thought that was effective because part of his methodology also is to throw off your opponent in any way possible and that's why you'd hear these high-pitched uh, uh screams that he would do before during and after his uh his attacks so like what what was that you know so um 19, 1964 they moved to oakland to chinatown uh in oakland and he opens up uh, a studio there and the quality he wanted was moral character in other words he didn't want people who wanted to learn these skills to attack to become bad guys right. you know to go on the offensive now that i have this power i'll just go in and, and start you know mugging people beating people up and and so moral character was a, a prerequisite to get into his school and guess what there were not that many <laughs> there were not that many people uh, who had a high enough moral character so the school was struggling then he goes to this um uh international karate uh, exhibition in uh, Long Beach, California. And that's where he does the two two-fingered push-up, okay? 
push oh, yeah. up on two fingers. And yeah, I tried that oh, this morning. Don't, yeah, I can't don't do try it. this at home. Don't try this at home, everybody. <laughs> I tried it. I can't. I can't do the two finger push up. You know, when I saw nah, Rocky, I was doing the one handed push ups. You know how Rocky would go from uh, one to the yeah, other. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's becoming a sensation. He's becoming recognized. And uh, the following year, sixty five, they give birth to Brandon Lee, his son, and Who goes um, on to be a star. That, for, for a yes, while in, in, in his own right, in his own right. Yes. And then 1966, <clears throat> the uh, filmmaker, Will, William Dozier, who had seen him in the Long Beach competition, he's like, how do I, for, a Hollywood uh, producer, he's like, how do I use this guy? So they find this, uh, this old comic strip called The Green Hornet. And uh, The Green Hornet is, you know, he fights bad guys. And his assistant, limo driver, his name is Cato, who is Asian. And here's where Bruce Lee, so he's got a ton of acting experience behind him from Hong Kong, but now he's in the US and he sees how different things are. And he says to, to the film crew, I am not gonna be the subservient Chinaman that, that has been in American films from day one. You know, the Charlie Chan, the Sosari uh, kind of guy. No, he, he's rejecting that. And they wanted him to actually fight like, a, you know, for the fight scenes, like fisticuffs. And he's like, no, I'm going to use, I have my own style. And they agreed to that. So, uh, and then there was a famous episode with Batman and Robin because the, the Batman show had taken off and they had one episode with, yes. with right. two couples. <laughs> and, and I remember I was a kid, Andy. That, that, that was yeah. Adam West. That was the Adam West show, right? Adam West and Burt Ward. Kaboom, you know. <laughs> it was, Boom, yeah, it, was, it was hilarious. And it was, the was show hilarious. was a big success because it was somewhat of a right. farce. You know, it wasn't yeah, really yeah. to be taken seriously. And that was one of the problems with the Green Hornet. They didn't know they were, they were riding on Batman's achievement, but it wasn't as farcical, so it wasn't as popular. But the, the scene where Cato fights Robin, Andy, we were like, of course, Cato can be Robin, Batman, and everybody else in Gotham City, but they didn't allow him to do it. So, <clears throat> but he's gaining more and more of a reputation in Hollywood. And now all of a sudden, actors come to start uh, training with him. So it's James. Yeah, hold on a second, Rob. Let's, 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 let me, yeah. Just let me jump in for a minute and, and interject a couple of points here. Uh, yeah, the yeah. Green Hornet was like, a, was like one of the early superheroes before our time, but it was radio. But, you know, yes. uh, people used to listen to The Shadow and The Green Hornet and everything. And mm -hmm. yeah, when we were kids, they brought that back in, in the TV show. Only, unfortunately, only, only lasted like one or two, one or two seasons. Right. But Bruce Lee got his Hollywood start. Other thing I wanted to say is uh, uh, Charlie Chan. Um, Charlie Chan was a legitimate hero. Uh, people, you know, young people today may never have heard of him or don't, never seen any of the movies. Uh, but he mm -hmm. was a Honolulu. He was a Honolulu homicide investigator, and he was a very he was a very competent uh, uh, homicide uh, you know police officer and and had great integrity. And it's interesting, mm -hmm. Robert, because I I can't I don't remember the name of the American writer who created the Charlie Chan character, 1930s I think. Okay. But he wanted he wanted to counteract explicitly want to counteract. The anti-Asian racism, the yellow peril, wow. you know, mentality, yes. and that had been fostered mm -hmm. by Fu Manchu. You know, the Fu Manchu books and movies which showed which showed the, this Chinese villain as I mean, he was just a monster. And uh, you're right, yeah, Andy. And, I misspoke. I, I, I'm yeah, sorry. Charlie, I, I Charlie actually Chan was a legitimate hero. It was the Fu Manchu. It was definitely the Fu Manchu that that Bruce Lee was against. I'm not sure right. his thoughts on Charlie Chan, but that by by the 1960s, that was not, yeah, not is, you know, that today, was not really. If Charlie, Chan, if Charlie Chan's referenced at all today, it comes from people who see, who denigrate, oh, this is a sign of racism and everything. That's, yeah. you know, that's yeah. false. He was a real hero. He was, a uh, you know, he was like Kojak. He is a homicide mm -hmm. investigator mm -hmm. of ability and integrity and deliberately designed to counteract the anti-Asian prejudice uh, that in part yeah. was fueled by the popularity of these Fu Manchu. That's wonderful. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's yeah, wonderful yeah. to know. So, and I'm surprised because I've read several, I'll, I'll, I'll show them um, later on, but I've read several biographies of Bruce Lee, including his own works. And I don't remember seeing that reference of him being positive, but again, fa just facing, and here's the other thing, facing the racism on both sides 
of East and West, it didn't affect him. Like, it didn't get him down. It just, like many heroes, it, what does it do? It's another obstacle. He works harder until he eventually succeeds. Because Hawaii 5-0, as soon as you said uh, Hawaii, I thought of Hawaii 5-0. That was one of the roles that he had a long shot to be in, but they gave it to an American they gave it to American right. actors. And then later on with uh, Kung Fu, the, the show they gave to David Carradine, oh, yeah. who was American. Right. So in Hollywood, th there was certainly bias. And, and Bruce Lee himself said, uh, this is what, one reason I love him, is that he said, if I was a Hong Kong producer and an American came over and wanted to do something, you know, a Kung Fu film, I would be skeptical of having my money, you know, the, uh, um, not be lost yeah, yeah you know so you have to make you he, have to he, make money right this is you have to make money and they didn't know that's part yeah, of fairness to hollywood yeah bruce lee bruce you're right bruce lee said it fairness to hollywood they didn't know if you put a you know, asian guy you know in his lead role if they make money and like he said if, if chuck norris came to hong kong you know would it make money with, right. with an asian a exactly racism that's racism it. abounds you know and yeah. so yeah but anyhow and but anyhow, so bruce lee but, so, but yeah so you talk about bruce lee in hollywood yeah. So now he's meeting these famous actors, and James Coburn, C. McQueen, and Lou Alcindor, who is now Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, who is the number one uh, player in UCLA. Seven foot two, Bruce Lee is like five foot seven, five foot eight. I mean, the gap, if you see pictures of the two of them together, and there are many, right. <laughs> just the different, and he was, he was amazed by the physicality and, the, and what, uh, Jabbar could do so, especially kicking. So we have this picture of him uh, kicking, and one benefit in fighting <clears throat> that Westerners don't necessarily think of is the effectiveness of kicking is you have a longer reach. You know, if you if you're gonna sure. fight sure. boxing somebody, you're you're that close. But if you kick someone from a distance, you can you can get them from from farther away and it's harder for them to get and, you and and you know? generate and generate more force too because your legs are yes, your legs you are stronger than, more than your arms that's that's right that's right yeah so <clears throat> now he's he's gaining popularity uh with the american he's got hollywood friends and uh they're still not finding the right role for him and he's a complete workaholic so now he's got schools that are that are that are starting to take off he's got <clears throat> Um, he's had some experience under his belt in acting, goes back to Hong Kong, and they actually, uh, around 1969-70, and they refer to the Green Hornet as the Cato Show. And so he has this renewed, there's this renewed interest in him as an actor in Hong Kong, and then, boom, he knocks out three movies in a row. The Big Boss, uh, what you mentioned, Fist of Fury, Way of the Dragon. And now his star is rising, and right. his goal is to um, now now get the American market. You know, the Hong Kong market is one thing, Hong Kong cinema. I think before Bruce Lee, the, the most famous, the biggest grossing movie was The Sound of Music. And it was like, three four million dollars like not very much but it was it was an older an older film and but it's a nice contrast the sound of music you know and, and a way of the dragon <laughs> yeah like, yeah exactly let me, yeah let me, let, so, let, me, let, me, let me ask you let me, yeah. let me ask you a question here though uh go back mm -hmm. a little bit i just i just remembered there's a legend that um he was unpopular in the you know the martial arts circles in in the united states because he was teaching you know americans who are white or black or whatever including and blacks Lou in Alcindor. particular yeah yeah, yeah oh is that right guys black yeah okay including lou alcinda who you know became famous mm -hmm. as cream up gold um and that some some famous martial arts guy challenges him to a fight over this i don't know if this is true or apocryphal uh, the challenge is to a fight on the on the terms that if Bruce Lee wins, uh, go ahead and train white and black Americans. And if I beat you, you got to stop. And, and Bruce Lee wins that fight. Is that true or is that just a legend? Yes, that's true. That's absolutely true. I, did, I didn't say on the on the door of every school he opened had the had the expression, I ch anyone who wants to challenge me to a fight. 
I'll do it. You name the time, you name the place. No, you know, and if you were walking down an alley and there's 10 bad guys, this and no, no weapons are allowed. There's one guy you want with you. It's Bruce Lee, because how many times have we seen to take on, you know, armies of people at once? Just one guy, the one against the many, you know, another. Yeah. Like, like Cyrano, you know, Cyrano fighting a hundred guys. Yes. But he had a sword. He had a sword. But, yeah, so but, um, and and Bruce Lee, yeah. but you're right. That's a, that's a very good point. Uh, thank you for bringing that up. So he that's how much he chal- he put himself on the line constantly, over and over again. His, his ideas because he's developing his ideas. He's making the mind body integration that we know is essential to 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 human life, and opens the school against the. They're starting to back off, but there's still resentment. Andy, you know, there's still resentment, especially, you know, with 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 the blacks. But you you're actually starting to see this integration of the cultures in Oakland, because the reputation again of the Chinese is they're these little submissive guys that you're going to steal a quarter from without any any problem. After Bruce Lee, it's like there's a different, <laughs> a different. They don't know who knows kung fu. You know, or what he right. calls uh, right. Ju- Queen. Uh, see, I I didn't, know, I didn't know that, Robert. I, I didn't know that. Uh, so the the Asian martial arts masters didn't want him teaching white Americans, but in particular, they didn't want him teaching black Americans. Yeah. Is that right? So yeah. there's racism against the whites, but uh, but even even more virulent racism against the blacks. I, I, I didn't. I yeah, didn't know, sadly, I, I didn't know that. sadly, yeah, okay. uh, you know, the blacks got it from everyone. You know, and, and yeah. every oh, bad, yeah, sure. you know, every bad aspect yeah. of a collectivist culture descended on you know, on the black race, on black uh, Americans. Yeah. 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 And, unfortunately. And, yeah, and in other, in other, other parts of the world too, like uh, that was during yeah. the years of apartheid in South Africa, but, but okay. So, right. so, you know, so, so, okay. So, so Bruce Lee wins that fight against this other martial arts guy. Must've been, is, must've been, hell, must been a hell of a fight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and now school's <laughs> open to white Americans and black Americans anybody of high character latinos i assume biracial everybody because he like martin luther king bruce lee cared much about character not about race right that's right again moral character was essential to bruce lee's way of life and so this he develops his own style and like, great. Just, what am i thinking what am i thinking robin his children are biracial you know, so he, you know, he and, and not, he was he in his ancestry yeah yeah oh, exactly that's right, that's and, right. and in his ancestry. So again, he's a human race. He's an individualist. Right, right. So, <clears throat> but the uh, Jute King Do is the, the name of the discipline that he founded. And it means the way of the intercepting fist. And the point there is that if somebody's attacking you, first you intercept their movement and then you go on the offensive to, as we say in Krav Maga, not to cause pain, but to cause damage. Because you you really want to 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 knock them out and just get, and get out of there. You're, you're, it, you're fighting for your life. That's the assumption. Yeah. You're fighting for your life. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So <clears throat> after the few um, you know Hollywood, not uh, I'm sorry, Hong Kong successes. Now he's ready with a big budget. He's ready to uh, film. Um, well, not as big a budget, but the Game of Death. He wants to do this film with. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and um, they they start filming. They get a, a couple of hours into into the film, and then he gets this offer for Enter the Dragon. So this is the first big blockbuster, um, cross you know crossing bridging East and West cinemas. And he because he's a workaholic, he's starting he's starting to. Um, <clears throat> He's directing, he's writing, he's choreographing everything, he's fighting, he's doing all these different, you know, all these different activities. But <clears throat> let me stop here, Andy, and just uh, go back to your, t- tell me your Strictly Ballroom uh, oh, yeah, point strictly, that you wanted to bring up. Yeah, this was, mm-hmm. that was like early 90s, I think, about the, the film's like 30 years old, Australian, like you said. And it was about um, this this young guy wants to bring in innovative steps into into ballroom dance, you know, and uh, like Howard Rock does in architecture, like Bruce Lee, does, Howard Rock in fiction, 
you know, and 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 in strictly ballroom is is fiction. Also, Bruce Lee does in real life. And the head of the ballroom dance federation says to him, you know, I don't, you know, all the steps in ballroom dancing have been designed by the masters long ago. All we can do respectfully is repeat. And the dialogue is taken verbatim out of the Fountainhead. Obviously, the the people who made the film had read the Fountainhead. Mm -hmm. The dialogue comes right mm -hmm. out of the chapter one, where the dean is talking to Howard Rock, and, and Rock says, "Why, you, you know?" And uh, and in strictly Borum, you know, it, they they you know inter they interposed or interchanged uh, Borum dance, you know, with for architecture. But it, the the theme the theme here is. Tradition shouldn't decide these kinds of things. Reality should decide it. What's what are the what are the beautiful yes. what are, uh, there might be there might be beautiful new steps in ballroom dance that we can introduce that haven't been done before. Just like Howard mm -hmm. Rook, you know, wants to introduce given the new materials, you you know, you have steel and, and concrete and glass you could build with. It allows new new forms that you couldn't do with wood or stone. And so you, there's new, there may be beautiful new forms in architecture, beautiful new steps in dance. And there may be more effective, you know, fighting methods to introduce into, into the martial arts. Tradition, in, in all three of these examples, tradition shouldn't be the highest uh, court of, of appeal. It shouldn't be the final authority, right? It should be what can be done in reality that's beautiful or effective as a, as a building or effective in self-defense. And, and I think a, a part of... Part of what's so impressive about Bruce Lee and the way he integrates, you know, martial arts uh, with philosophy is he's very reality focused. Is he's not following tradition? It's what's gonna where, where, where this is this is a guys this is fighting method. We were assuming you know this isn't just for like for tournaments. This is for self defense in real in real life in real time. And what's what you know you want to save somebody's life? You want to save your life? We want to know what's the most what's the most proficient form. Of actual fighting to you know to, to uh, in self defense, and so he introduces new moves and new you know and new and new methods. And he's a, you know he's an innovator. And he, he's like he's like Howard Rock in the Fountain. He's like the hero whose name I forget in the uh, in the ballroom dance film Strictly Born. Right. <clears throat> yeah, I don't remember him either, but I I haven't seen that movie in years. But I know exactly what you're talking about. And yeah, I, re I remember sitting. I remember sitting in the movie theater with my girlfriend at mm -hmm. that time, and and the, and mm -hmm. and the head of the Borough Dance Federation. All the moves in Borough Dance, all the steps have been designed by the masters yeah. of the past. All we could do, you know, is is, re is repeat. And I whispered in her mm -hmm. ear, "That dialogue comes straight out of the Fountainhead." The and she said to me. She, yeah, she said to me, "Shut up and watch the movie." So I said, "I said, oh, okay, sorry." <laughs> <laughs> That's good. But Bruce so Lee does this in real time, right? In, in real life, he does it in real these time. Are, these other two stories, also, these other two stories, are fiction. But this is this is reality. Yes, with, with Bruce Lee. Yes, again, part of his legendary character. But also, Andy, he knew the context of modern society, which is where he's like, don't think just because you know martial arts, that's the end all be all. Because now someone could just take out a gun and it's it's all over. I think there's a movie, right? There, there was some movie that they, oh, yeah. they had that. Raiders, guess, Raiders of the Lost Ark. Is it Ra Raiders, Raiders of the Lost Ark? Yeah. yeah, when a guy is swinging the sword around and Harrison Ford, he's really, really scary. Harrison Ford just pulls out a gun, boom, it kills a guy. <laughs> It was hilarious. So Bruce Lee anticipated that movie because his point is, you know, right, identify right. the context that you're in. And if it is a modern situation where somebody can simply have a gun, all the judo and karate and uh, Jun Kin Do, you know, moves will not help you. So best to avoid it. And that's also another, another point that um, was important to him because if he could avoid a fight, he would. And there are a couple of examples where he's on a boat with somebody and they're, you know, again, when you, you have a target on your back, when, when you have this reputation that you're unbeatable. So everybody, and especially if they're drunk and rowdy, thinks they can. And one time they're, they're on a boat and uh, there's an island in the distance. And Bruce Lee's like, uh, this guy's egging him on. Come on, let's fight. Let's fight. And he's like, okay, let's fight on that island. And um, 
here's a raft, we'll get on the raft and, and it'll take us to the island. The guy gets on the raft first and, and Bruce Lee has the boat take off, <laughs> just leaving him <laughs> on his own. So his point is the best way to fight is not to fight. Okay. Yeah, and that guy, and that so, guy was a bully, right? That guy was a bully. Yeah, that? exactly. That's one of the, that's that's the, one of the that's dragon. The, that's one of the dragon movies, right? And uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Bruce Lee showing the world. This is, this is, uh, violence is in, in a last, uh, you know, last resort. Right, you, you yeah. want peaceful resolutions right. and different whatever right. form. Reason, uh, yeah. be reasonable with with people, and he know he knew the value of reason. Uh, that's for sure. So, uh, one thing when he first met Lou Alcindor, Alcindor says to him, "I want to learn ch uh, Tai Chi," and Bruce Lee says, "Forget Tai Chi. That's for old men in parks. You know, you should learn <laughs> uh, Duke King Do." <laughs> and then Alcindor says, "I saw Bruce Lee as a renegade Taoist priest." <laughs> All right. So it's like the two cultures, just, you know, the stereotypes, they're just smashing them. They're completely smashing them. And so they, they start filming Game of Death. Then he gets this offer, um, big blockbuster offer to be in, I, I have it right here, into, into the dragon. And <clears throat> this was it. It was like his magnum opus. Finally, he has a budget, a Hollywood budget to... Uh, make this film and his his star is rising and they're having a party for him in Hollywood and he had this he had this competition but the, the, he had a, a, a degree of jealousy by the way he had his flaws and we could talk about his flaws yeah, well, for well, sure. we, all, we all we all do <laughs> so yeah, yeah unfor unfortunately um you know to, to name a few once he was uh, famous in Hollywood he he was uh, sadly a womanizer and um, oh, is that right? I didn't know that. He did, yeah, and he smoked marijuana, which he he because he was so hyper, he felt that that had actually sl would slow him down. So he made it. He made a justification for that. No other, to my knowledge, no no other drugs. But um, so he has this big party in Hollywood, and he's calling Steve McQueen because he wants McQueen to show up. He wants to like rub it in his face. You know, come on now, now I'm topping you. And the queen doesn't show up. He sends he sends a glossy eight by eleven, and he signs it to Bruce Lee, my number one fan. And, and that's, that's funny. Is, by the way, so we should point. It's funny. Yeah, we should yeah. point out again. Younger generation may only know Steve McQueen by name, or maybe you know not even that. In yeah. circa nineteen seventy, Steve McQueen was a megastar. I mean, who uh, he was. 20, 20 or 30 years later, guys like Harrison Ford and Denzel Washington, you know, we're, we're at that level. Who, who's the biggest male yeah. box office today in 2021? Who's the biggest star Ooh. today? I'm, I don't, I don't, even, I don't, I don't, know. I don't, I don't yeah. know if there's anybody I, quite at, at, at that, you know, at that level. Ryan Gosling. They make more money, but I don't think they have the power yeah. as, as such. Uh, yeah, maybe DiCaprio. Ryan Gosling is, yeah, DiCaprio is, is a, you know, is a big star. Brad, Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt. Uh, well, he's he's getting older now, but he's Brad Pitt's still a big star. Yeah. Everybody knows him. He was a big star certainly 10, 20 years ago, and I think still is today. Um, so that's that's the that's the the height at which Steve McQueen was, nineteen seventy, number one box office in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, hero, you know, portrayed heroes very effectively, terrific actor. And we can recommend, you know, you could you could go up on Netflix or Amazon Prime and see yeah. Papillon or Bullet. You know, the sand pebbles. The getaway. You know, some, some, mm -hmm. Yeah, the getaway. Yeah, the Thomas Crown Affair, the original with, with Steve McQueen and Faye Dunaway. You can see he was a big star. And uh, so yeah. so he didn't come to Bruce Lee's party. He sent a photograph to Bruce Lee to my number one fan. Photo. That's funny. Yeah, that's my funny. Fan, that's funny. Because yeah. that competitive juice in him yeah, is yeah, like, yeah, not yeah. only can I beat you in martial arts, my discipline, but I'll beat you in acting as well. You know, like yeah. he was just fiercely competitive. And, and that's that's part of, certainly part of who he was. So while they're filming uh, Enter the Dragon, this is now May of um, 1973. He basically collapses. He's over. He's overextended. He's overworked. It's super hot in Hong Kong. He's on some kinds of medication um, uh, that he's taking for different. He he had he had a back injury like seven eight years earlier and never fully recovered and was taking some kind of. Uh, 
some kind of drug for it, a prescription drug. And also he did something weird, which is he had his, um, his armpit sweat glands removed because he didn't want to sweat as much on camera. He didn't think that looked cool. So that was a factor. And then Hong Kong it being hot, he collapsed. They didn't call it heat stroke uh, back then, but uh, he was in the hospital for a couple of days and then went back, you know, kind of left early because he just had so, so many commitments. And so this workaholic, he, he didn't want to miss that opportunity. He, he thought the window was, was closing on him. So he wanted to do everything, kind of make up for lost time. And then um, uh, the movie is, not, is due to come out in a couple of days, then July 20th, 1973. Similarly, he has another, um, he's actually with a, with a woman and I think one of the film uh, producers and she gives him uh, something to take for, for his pain and fall, slips into a coma and never, uh, never comes out of it. So a at weird, 32, you know, freakish, right? at, at, at age, age 32. 32. So I remember, I remember, and then the rumors are flying everywhere yeah, because right, that's right. Andrew the dragons do to come out in three days rumors are swirling about how what happened with bruce lee and i remember my older brother damien telling me uh that these chi these chinese guys beat him up he was too successful they were jealous they beat him up and that was certainly one one of the narratives uh that we heard well they better uh, have then. been a bunch of they better have been a bunch of them if <laughs> yeah. they were, if they were kind and of they and probably they, and they had weapons too so uh that was one you know, bad uh, marijuana, they tried to make it because insurance companies uh, for him, he opened up, he actually had two um, life insurance policies. Um, earlier that year, he opened one, he, one for his wife and two kids. He had two kids uh, at that time, Bra uh, Brandon and Shannon is his daughter who is still alive today. And then he opened a second one once he had more income. So uh, but after he died, he's flown to Seattle, which is where he, you know, she, his wife and, and family were and uh, just controversy, you know, there wasn't, it wasn't today where you could, well, today there's so much misinformation as well, it, but it was, right. it was just not as, you know, the facts were just not as readily available and Due to and it happened in Hong Kong. Ha happened in Hong Kong in 1973. You know, it was hard. It was harder to get for honest people who really wanted to investigate. It was harder to get information. You know, back then. Yes. When, when it happened yes. on the other side, other side of the world. You know, t today right. you could get get have a Zoom call with the, uh, you know, with the uh, that's right with the MD with exactly. the MD who did who did the inquest yeah. and, and get and get the facts. Mm -hmm. Back then, it was much more difficult to get the facts. Yeah. So uh, after he dies, his legacy, you know, unfortunately, this is what happens with, with people who die young and now everyone wants a piece of them. So the budget, I think the budget was like in today's money, 500,000, uh, five, 5 million for Enter the Dragon. And it earned up to this day, $350 million, you know, by wow. far biggest um you know, imagine making that investment as a, as a Hollywood uh, studio. And this is now all of a sudden Kung Fu fighting. Remember that song? Yeah. I think oh, yeah, Davis absolutely. Is, is <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, right. It, and right. it's like, it was the a craze. TV, the TV was, show, the TV show Kung Fu with David Carradine, you David mentioned Carradine, before, David that Carradine, comes very yeah. popular so in now, 1970s. All, all these things that he doesn't get to experience in life, you know, they happen after he dies because he got the ball rolling and right. <clears throat> more legitimate roles for Asian actors are coming in. Schools are, uh, are blossoming everywhere. There's more masculinity uh, on screen, okay, the, 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 especially with Asians, uh, that he's, he, he's just upsetting the traditions on both sides of, uh, we could say the Pacific, right? <clears throat> in Asia and in America. So I remember 2007, I, I, uh, no, 2009, I went to uh, the Northwest 
uh, states number 47, eight and nine to for me to knock out Oregon, <laughs> Washington and Alaska. And I flew into Seattle. And what do you think the weather was like when I arrived in Seattle? It was rainy. It was raining. I get in, I get in a rent a car and I go straight to Bruce Lee's grave. <clears throat> And the rain is like it's it's getting worse and worse. And I'm I park, I can't find the grave. And I, some Indian guy, Navneet is the guy's name. I see him walking around puzzled like me, and I'm like, Are you looking for Bruce Lee's grave? And he's like, Yeah. I'm like, okay, let's 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 try to find it together. <clears throat> and finally we get to, you know, we we get to the grave. And I totally forgot about his son. His son Brandon is buried right next to him. I was like so fixated on seeing on uh, seeing Bruce Lee's uh, grave. Yeah, Brandon and on, became a movie and, star. But Brandon became a movie star himself and died in some freak accident on the movie set, didn't he? Guns. Did yeah, he, was he, yeah, the crow. Was, was was he? Yeah, the crow. That's right. Was he? Was he accidentally yeah. shot? Is that what it was? Yeah. Was Alec? Was Alec yeah. Baldwin in that movie? I mean, how, how did he? Was Alec Baldwin? I mean, I, I, how did he? How did he get? He had a cameo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, he was on his way to being a star himself, and he died. We—I don't think he was even thirty when Brandon Lee died, was he? I and mean, he was very young. no, he wasn't even thirty. You're right; he was younger than his father. What a, you know, a, a different kind of tragedy. Also, he was coming into his own because what a reputation to be the son of Bruce Lee. He right. wanted to be an actor, wanted to be in martial arts. It's the the, the deck is somewhat stacked against you, as, at least if you want to carve a name for yourself. So on the grave, there's a book, it says founder of Jeet Kune Do, and then there's, there's kind of like a, a marble book opened, and it says, your inspiration continues to guide us toward our personal liberation. Uh, a quote, and what this is showing to me, Andy, is the fact that he was a thinker. He was, again, we, we mentioned this mind-body integration, and having a thick book, you know, right there with the, with the beautiful quote, is something that I think, okay, this is, you know, this is capturing the man and what, what, you know, what he stood for. Uh, again, Seattle, who, who would think Bruce Lee is buried in Seattle, but sure enough, you know, that again, that's where his wife and- He went and, to, he went uh, to, I went to college there, right? Didn't he? He went to, yes, went to college at that's University right. of Washington mm -hmm. in Seattle. I think. In high school. Let me, yeah. Let, in, yeah, okay, okay. Let me, okay. let me, mm -hmm. uh, a few things. Uh, first of all, I, I shouldn't make jokes about people dying accidental gunshots on on uh, you know film sets. Yes. It's not funny. I don't know what Alec Baldwin was doing or thinking, and that's you know, in, in that tragic incident. But you know, there's nothing funny about it. Uh, and some and similarly with uh, Brandon, you know, with um, Brandon Lee. Did you ever see the film The Crow? Because I never, I never saw. Yeah, it. I did. Yeah. Okay. It's kind of dark. You know, it's it's not. I, not a fan of that genre myself. So, but I did watch it kind of as an obligation. You know, that's how right, okay. Bruce Lee. And, yeah, and, that's and, the, yeah, right. Right. Yeah. Another, another mm -hmm. tragedy that his son was on his way to being, yes. like you said, coming into his own, being a star in his own right. And he dies even mm -hmm. younger than his father. Uh, also, fact fact checked here. Uh, uh, the show, <laughs> you know, an honest fact check here, not, not you know, dogmatic authoritarian one. The show Kung Fu. David Carradine was that before Bruce Lee became a big star, or, or, or was it was it simultaneous or after Bruce Lee? Well, the, the, the script, the it aired right after because they cashed in on the phenomenon of of okay. his life, and they wanted him. You know, when the script was originally wrote, written, he he was clearly the guy for it, but they they chose the American because they just didn't think. American audiences would accept yeah, an right, Asian, right. you know, star, an Asian yeah, frontman, right. and yeah, so, yeah, right, right. and that had been the key, yeah, and similar to Hawaii Five O, and and again, what did that do for Bruce Lee? It just made him work harder, you know, right. and, and do right. the thing. Even that, they would have limited his scope of activities because it would have been more scripted, and he they would have pigeonholed him to some extent with, you know, with his. Kung Fu films, he had a lot more creativity and 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 say and say so, and so that's okay. yeah that's how that so, uh, that's how that so the the, the <laughs> famous TV show with David Carradine became so popular after Bruce Lee had had popularized yes. martial arts. Is that right? okay? I, I just wanted yeah. to, to to make sure on that. One other thing I, I want to mention: what you were talking about that's really striking. 
you would, you would mention his his back injury or spinal injury that he suffered when he was yeah. training, right? Right, right. Yeah. I mean, if I, he's tra- he trained. He was actually so lifting weights. It's odd. He was he was lifting weights, and I think it was just too heavy, or he wasn't warmed up. But yeah, that was that was led to a back injury. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, well, what from what I'd read, the doctors told him he had to stay in bed for six months in order to heal. Uh, you, you know, you think Bruce Lee hyperactive, like you said, but he did it. He stayed, he willed he himself to stay in bed and, you know, or at least rest. Uh, uh, I don't know if he was in bed all that time, but you know, stay, you know, rest for the six months that the doctors prescribed. And he used that, he couldn't train the body, but he used it to train the mind, right? So to study philosophy, exactly. to, to, to think about Great it, point. He's and, developing, yep. developing his own philosophy. So there's the, there's the mind body integration that you were talking about before. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Mm -hmm. And so in 2012, Uh uh, right on cue, 2012, I went to Asia. Uh, First time I went to uh, Hong Kong, mainland China with somebody super uh, dear and near and dear to you, Andy. Yes, with my (laughs) daughter, Penelope Joy, who was born in China. Yes, that's right. And, and, uh, And her mom. And so mm-hmm. in Hong Kong, we had planned to go to the Madame Tussaud uh, Wax Museum. And we get in and the line is like, there's like 50 people online in front of us. And I have, to this day, I have kind of like laser beam eyesight. And I see this little, this little placard near the cash where they take, um, where they're collecting money. And it says the following wax figures are being refurbished. Bruce Lee. And I say, Andy, I'm like, what? No, Bruce Lee. I came all the way from New York. Everybody online just turns around and looks at me like I'm a psycho. And I, and I kind of probably look like a psycho myself. I was so disappointed. The Nazi. And it was the Game of Death one, if you've seen the, the uh, yellow jumpsuit with the, the black stripe down. So the next day we went to, across, the, this is uh, an island in Hong Kong. Uh, we took the ferry to this statue, um, which was done about, I think it was his uh, 50th um, or 60th birthday the, that they did this incredible statue of Bruce Lee. And I thought, actually, this is better because the, the game of death with the yellow jumpsuit, you can't see how ripped he is, you know, I mean, the, he is the six pack guy, even in Hollywood right. the, after him is when you would see this kind of, they, they were bulkier, you know, the John Wayne types, they were bulkier leading men, but after Bruce Lee, he, he's the one that, you know, brought in kind of the, the six pack and standing in front of this statue, I was like, yeah, this is, this is why I'm here halfway around the world, you know, to just stand in front of, <clears throat> Uh, my hero since since I'm a kid. I, I just uh, for all of the reasons you know that 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 we said uh, before. He, I just think you know the man was one of a kind, and I could say you know he broke down barriers between the East and West, and he was an innovator in martial arts and cinema, and he rejected the racism and tradition that both of those uh, entailed, and he embraced the philosophy of mind and body where they were in harmony and moral character. And the other thing I didn't really mention was self-actualization. Like he was about self-development and, you know, this is for one or all of these reasons is why he's just uh, so famous, so influential uh, to this day. <clears throat> and <clears throat> mm-hmm. I have one one book, Andy, that I want uh, to read. Uh, a quote from his um, his wife. Uh, this is the uh, the book is called Str- uh, Striking Thoughts. That's the image that Elliot had up before. Oops. And uh, <clears throat> nope, not working for me. Okay, I should have been more ready. Well, you well you got it. You so, got it right, though. I mean, uh, you know, Bruce <clears throat> Lee did did all. Did all of those great things. You have, you have the quote that you're yeah, looking for? Yeah, I'll just say a quote from his wife. She says, Bruce Lee was a man born with a purpose who fulfilled a purpose much greater than he ever even imagined. The spirit of Bruce Lee continues to be the inspirational force that motivates young people to care for and nurture their bodies and souls and to bring out the best that they have within themselves. As many fans have commented, Bruce Lee made a difference in my life. 
Uh, I say well, amen to that, it. Andy. Yes. Best within yes. yourself. You know, that's what he was mm-hmm. about, his his entire psyche. Uh, and that's why he's just so, you know, so influential to this day. Absolutely. That That's why he's the hero that he is. You gave the reasons. <laughs> He was an individualist, valued moral character, combated racism in, in many, many different forms, was an innovator in the field of martial arts. He was an independent Howard Raw kind of thinker. Who, you know, yes. is, is, I think it's, I don't think it's over, I don't think it's hyperbolic to say he revolutionized the martial arts, is it? I mean, no, it's not. I don't think Absolutely. No, no, I mean, there were, there were like six schools in the West <laughs> before <laughs> Bruce Lee, and there were thousands, you know, and, and uh, on both. So, yes, and, and, and revolutionized cinema, too, bringing East right. and West together. Mm-hmm. Right. So for, for all of these reasons, we salute Bruce Lee, the hero. Say thank you. Thank you, Bruce Lee, for, for your contributions. The kick and all these yeah. other things. Yeah, yeah. The contributions <laughs> you made to, to our lives to help us you know, self-actualize. Yes. And uh, I want to, you know, thank Bruce Lee. And also, Robert, I want to wish you a heroic day. Have a, uh, everybody too, out Andy. there in Hero Land. Now, thank you. Lead a more heroic life. And we will see you again next week next on week. The Hero Show. Take care.